Greetings today in that name that's far above every name. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We welcome any visitor that's visiting with us today. We're glad to have you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be a real inspiration to everyone. And once again, we ask you in the radio listening audience, if you get on your phone and call a good shut-in friend, have them to tune in to WNGC, the big giant station in Athens, Georgia. I do believe that we can be a blessing to them, and I trust you will. Now you can get the entire program today on tape. That is the music, the singing, and the message. On tape, it would be tape number 237. You can write in and get it if you send in a gift of $3 to help pay for radio expense. We'll mail you the tape. I'm going to speak today on this subject, Grace Extended to an Illegitimate Son. Grace Extended to an Illegitimate Son. Turn in your Bible to Judges chapter 11, page 301 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. The old man walking down the street one day and stepped on a banana peeling and fell flat of his back and really busted the street. A little boy came running up. He said, uh, Mister, said, would you, would you do that again? Said, my mama didn't see you that time. So you can imagine how he felt. Turn to Judges chapter 11. I want to read about 11 verses while you're turning there. Be glad to send your list to the tape and you can select the ones you want. Write in and request them by number or by title. Be glad to send you a tape or more than one for $3 each. We'll also be glad to send you one of our brochures on a proposed Holy Land tour. Now this is one of the greatest tours we've set up thus far. We'll be going to Israel for eight days and then going into Geneva, Switzerland. Of all of my 12 tours to the Holy Land, I've never been to Switzerland. We've flown over Switzerland sometimes, a few times, but I've never been there. And we're looking forward to going there and see that beautiful, beautiful country of Switzerland. And this tour will take place in March of next year. And you have plenty of time to get ready. Write in and get a, a brochure. Look it over and make up your mind about it. Send your pastor. Send your pastor and his wife. One of the greatest things you can do for them is send them to the Holy Land. You may say, preacher, aren't there a lot of trouble over there? Not so much as it used to be. I think Gaddafi got the message whenever Reagan dropped a few eggs over there in his territory. I'm not uneasy about it because I believe God will take care of us. I think it'll be much better. We're going to be going to Israel, which is a safe country, and then be flying on the Israeli airlines and the SWIFT airlines, and Switzerland is a safe country. I'm not worried about it one bit in the world. You're just about as safe over there in Israel and Switzerland as you'd be in the city of New York. So it doesn't bother me about that. So you think about it and pray about it and write in and get the brochure. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is a zip code number. Now, Judges chapter 11, verse 1. Now, Jephthah the Gilonite was a mighty man of valor, and he was a son of a harlot, and Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out at, with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the, the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the, the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jethar out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jethar, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jethar said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you come unto me now when you are in distress? 
And the elders of Gilead said unto Jethar, Therefore we turned again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jethar said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jethar, the Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. And Jethar went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jethar uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now that's reading from Judges chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Now if you notice here, we find this young man an illegitimate child born in a home and because he was a son of a harlot the other members of the family said he can't remain here in this home among our children and they cast him out now it's a sad story now this man here is a type of all sinners the story of Jethar is a story of every unconverted sinner of course if he's a sinner is unconverted and being lifted up from the dunghill and set among princes. That's what happened to him. In Psalms 113 and verse 7, he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill. Now we need to remember the pit from which we were digged. Now we were all sinners lost before God, all gone astray. Everyone turned unto his own way. And God laid on Jesus Christ our Savior the nick us all. And we need to realize that. We were all saved out of sin. There was none good. The Bible said no not one. And this man here Jethar is a picture of all sinners. As a picture of the marvelous grace extended toward this illegitimate son. That was born of this harlot here in this home of Gilead. I want you to notice first of all that he was born in sin. The Bible says in Judges 11.1. Now Jephthah the Gilonite was a mighty man of valor and he was a son of a harlot. He was born in sin because of the act of sin. And the Bible said he was born in sin. He was a mighty man of valor but a child of iniquity. He was a marked individual. We find another man in the Bible. Naaman was a mighty man of valor but he was a leper. We saw that some few weeks ago. And by birth, this man here, Jethar, was disqualified from entering into the congregation of the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 2, the Bible says, An illegitimate son cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord until the tenth generation. Now that was Old Testament law. That does apply in this day of grace. It applied in those days that if a child was born uh, from a person, an illegitimate, then of course, that illegitimate child could not go into the congregation of the Lord until the 10th generation. After the 10th generation, he could enter into the congregation of the Lord. So this man here was an outcast. He could not enter into the congregation of God because he was born an illegitimate son and he was on the outside. Now the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A man must be born into God's family. We can't inherit it. We're not good enough to get in. Not so. Every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God just alike. And we're all in sin apart from God. And God must take us out of sin and places in the body of Jesus Christ all alike. I will never get into the family of God. I will never make it to heaven. I was reading, I believe, in today's Daily Bread, the article for the day, told about this young man while he was a boy in the uh, uh, state of Washington, uh, in the district of Washington, D.C. There he attended Sunday school. He was a naughty little fella. And his Sunday school teacher couldn't do much with him. He disturbed uh, the the other members of the class and, and really gave the Sunday school teacher problems. And finally he left and after he left, the teacher was somewhat glad he was gone because he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't pay any attention. He disturbed the others in the class and it really irritated the teacher. 
And he went out west and was gone for a long period of time and lived a terrible life of sin. And then he came back to Washington. And as he came back he, in, he passed the cemetery. And he just glanced at a tombstone there, the marker. And he saw a name on there that looked familiar. And he checked that name. And that name was the name of his Sunday school teacher back when he was a little boy that he gave so much trouble to. And he looked at that name and began to think about what his Sunday school teacher taught him. And uh, how evil he was. And, and he wouldn't listen like he should have. But he heard what the teacher said many times. And he began to think about that. He stood there and he meditated upon what the Sunday school teacher said when he was a little boy trying to teach him in his class. And it broke his heart. And he got out on his knees there near the tombstone of this teacher. And repented and gave his heart to God and God saved him. And he became a great pastor and pastored a great church. Now that Sunday school teacher died not knowing that his life and his teaching had affected this boy. Or that God would use it in later years to bring this boy to Christ. That Sunday school teacher no doubt gave up on him and said the boy won't listen. I can't teach him anything. He disturbs the class. And when he was gone, no doubt the teacher was glad that he left. Not realizing later on in years, after many years, that boy would come back, a young man, and see his name on the tombstone marker and there uh, remember the words he said or what he taught and get right with God and become a great pastor in a great church. So you never know when you're teaching a class or when you're witnessing to someone or when you're singing a gospel song what God's going to do with that even further on down the road. You might think you're not doing any good. You might think, well, I'm not getting nowhere fast. But who knows? God may be planning something in a heart that will remain there and bring that person to Christ later on. That's happened many, many times as teachers have taught and seemingly become discouraged because they saw no results. And later on, much have been accomplished through their efforts. Now this man was born in sin. Secondly, he was disinherited. In uh, chapter 11, verse 2, And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jethar and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. His right to inherit by succession was destroyed through his father's sins. There he could not have an inheritance along with his half-brothers there because of his father's sin. By Adam's sin, we were all made sinners. The reason we need Jesus Christ our Savior is because of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And because of our forefathers' sin, we are born sinners in the world. We were all put on the outside by Adam's sin, on the outside of God, the outside of Christ. If we have any inheritance among them that are sanctified, it must be by faith in Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter six, 26 and verse 18, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in Christ. So we need to realize we were on the outside. We were not in Jesus. And then when God saved us, He planted us, He placed us in Christ. The Bible says by one spirit are we baptized into the body of Christ. Number three, he became a companion of the vain. In chapter 11 and verse 3, Then Jethar fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there gathered vain man to Jethar and went out with him. Now when they kicked this man out of the house because he was the son of a harlot, he had no inheritance among his brethren in the house of his father, and they kicked him out. And when they did, he became a vain person. He became even more wicked. And the other wicked people around him began to assemble with him. And pitched a lot with him. He was a natural born leader. Now some people are born natural born leaders. Whether it be in the world or in service for God. They're just natural born leaders. Now Simon Peter was somewhat of a natural born leader when God saved him. Now you have people like that in the world. You can always spot them. Teachers can spot them in classes when they're juniors and immediates. The young people in the class. There's always one or two that is willing to take the lead. 
and willing to uh, do their part in leading others. They're spotted. Now, people are just born that way. And Jephthah was born a natural born leader. He could go out and get together a congregation of people and lead them in the direction he wanted them to go. He became a vain person and led them into more and more evil. The Bible said, like a sheep, we've gone astray. We turn everyone to our own way. That's exactly what he did. He kept drifting and drifting and drifting away from his father's house because he was kicked out. He was on the outside. And he went into the land of Tob, the Bible tells us. Fowls of feather flocked together. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 23, talking about the apostles and disciples, said being let go, they went to their own company. Now God's people should flock together, associate together, fellowship together, meet together, pray together, worship together in the field of God because we're in the same family. You find people in this world doing likewise out in the world. They do that because birds of the feather flock together. Number four, he received the important invitation. Just so didn't realize that one day they would need him back in his father's house. He didn't realize that. He hadn't thought about it. He thought he's gone forever. But there came a day when they needed this man because he was a leader. He was a warrior. He was a fighter. He was a winner. And they needed him. And whenever these people came to attack to Israel, or whenever these, the, the people of Ammon came to attack the people of Israel, they said, we need somebody to lead us in the battle. We need a leader with courage. We need somebody that's not afraid to have sagacity enough to lead us in the right direction. And so they have to think about this man, Jethar. They said he'd been kicked out of the house of Gilead, but uh, he's a leader. Let's see if we can't find him and entice him to come back and lead us in the battle. And so he received that important invitation. Verses 5 and 6 of my text. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jethar out of the land of Tob. And they said unto him, Be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. They said, Jethar, we know what happened to you. We're sorry about that, and we want you to come and be our captain. There's a battle raging in the land of Israel. The Ammonites are coming and we, we need your help. Would you come and, and lead us in the battle and, and fight this war? Would you come and be our captain? He received a very important invitation. So the call to Jethar is like the gospel called us today. Will you come? The Holy Spirit of God knowing you've been an outcast. You've been out of the family of God. Because of our forefathers we were left on the outside. But there are some saying, come, the Holy Spirit is saying, come, come, come into battle and fight with God's people. Come into the family of God. The Spirit of God is speaking to every sinner. Come into the family of God. Come on in and, and uh, help us fight the battle and help us to win souls and help us do what we should do to the glory of God. And they said, will you come? That's what the Spirit of God is saying today to Many people, some of you in the radio listen audience, the Spirit of God is saying to you, will you come to Jesus? The Bible said if you will come unto Him, He'll in no wise cast you out. You have an invitation. The invitation to the sinner is come. God said, come unto you that lay in heaven laden, and I'll give you rest. God said, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though to be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come, the Holy Spirit is saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest, said the Lord Jesus. God said to know in his family, Come on the inside of the ark. Now God is saying to that sinner, Come. But he's saying to that Christian, Go. When you come to Jesus, God said, Now you in turn go and serve me. The command to every child of God is go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That's our responsibility. God wants us to go. Many great things have been accomplished through people going. Dwight L. Moody was one of the goingest men that ever lived in America. He was a layman and he shook two continents for God. He robbed hell of over a million souls. He was never an ordained preacher. And he never finished grade five in uh, grammar school. And yet he jawed two continents for God, England and America. 
took one in one hand, as it were, and one in the other, and shook them for God, and robbed hell of over a million souls. But Dwight L. Moody was a going man. Several years ago, I walked in the office of a man that's now gone into eternity, fellow C.A. C. Rowden, and he had a picture of Dwight L. Moody there on his desk. I said to Mr. Rowden, I said, uh, did, did, uh, that's a great man. He said, yes, he sure was. He said, I'll never forget the time that I talked with him. I said, sir, did I hear you say that you talked with Dwight L. Moody? He said, yes, sir. I sure did. And I sat down and I said, uh, Mr. Rodden, I want you to tell me about it. He said, many years ago when I was only 18 years old, young boy here in Athens, a Christian that loved God, Dwight L. Moody came to Atlanta, then the tabernacle, to preach. And he said, I went all the way to Atlanta to hear him. I'll never forget that man, said he. Said when I walked in that tabernacle, he was in the pulpit, a stocky built fellow. He was preaching on this subject, be not deceived, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. He said, I sat there and I heard that man preach. He stirred me. And at the close of service, I walked up to him and I said, Mr. Moody, he said, Yes, a young man. He said, uh, I said to him, Sir, I'm a young man from Athens, Georgia, and I'd like to talk with you. Would you spare a few minutes for me? He said, young man, I'll be glad to converse with you on the way to the hotel. If you'll come along, we'll move on our way. He said, I started down the street with Dwight L. Moody to the hotel. We had to walk a block or so. And he said, about time I'd get him engaged in a conversation, he'd meet somebody on the street and he'd stop them and tell them about Jesus. And then we'd go on. Same thing happened again. On we went. Said he was the goingest man I've ever seen for God. He didn't let anybody get by without telling without Jesus when he had to have a chance. Dwight L. Moody made a vow to God. He said, God, every day you let me live, I'll never let a day go by without witnessing personally to somebody about Jesus during the day. Dwight L. Moody one day is very busy and he forgot to witness to someone and he went home and went to bed and, and he had to think about, I, have, I haven't witnessed to somebody today about Jesus. He got up out of his bed and put on his clothes. He said, I... I don't know where I'll find anybody to witness to it. It's pouring down rain. And he went to the door and it was raining. He saw a man coming down the street with an umbrella over his head. He ran out and said, uh, Mr., could I walk down the street with you under that umbrella? He said, sure, man. I'd be glad if you do so. And he said, walking down that street, Dwight L. Moody told him about the great love of God, the umbrella of God that would cover him up and hide him from the wrath of God. Preached him, told him about Jesus as he walked down the street. Later on, Dwight L. Moody heard someone knocking on his door one morning about 3 o'clock. He got up, went to the door. He said, I wonder what it's all about. And he opened that door and there stood that man that he walked down the street with under that umbrella and told about Jesus. He said, Mr. Moody, he said, I haven't been able to rest. I've been so disturbed ever since you talked with me the other night while it was raining. You was walking with me under my umbrella and I want to be saved. Would you help me to Jesus? Mr. Moody said, man, come on in here. And I'll help you to Jesus. And he won that man to God. Mr. Moody was a man that believed in being on the go for God. He was saved when he was just a young lad. And he would take a pony out in the slums of uh, Chicago. And he had put little children on that pony. And carry them to an old store building and set them down. And go back and get more and set them down. And he had preached to them three or four, five or six, a dozen or more. And that's where he started out. Preaching to those children, tell them about Jesus, win them to God. And he was a, a great soul winner. And that's the way he started out. But did you know how Dwight L. Moody got saved? Dwight L. Moody was working in a, a shoe shop. And he had a Sunday school teacher by the name of Mr. Kimball, who was in real ill health. Dwight had been to uh, Mr. Kimball's Sunday school class. And Mr. Kimball noticed Dwight. He's, he's different kind of a boy. He hadn't seen a boy just like that coming into his class. He told him to turn to a certain place in the Bible and told him to turn to the Gospel of John. He went all the way back to the book of Revelation. He couldn't find the Gospel of John. He didn't know anything about the Bible. And Mr. Kimball noticed he didn't know a thing in the world about the Bible, about God, about salvation. And he began to pray for him. And Mr. Kimball discovered himself being in ill health. He had to go away to a sanatorium to spend some time. But he had Dwight L. Moody on his heart. He said, i got to go talk with that boy personally. Before I go into the hospital, I don't know, I may never see him again. And he went to this shoe shop where Dwight helped repair shoes and so forth. Went in and said to the man, said, you have a young man here by the name of Dwight L. Moody? He said, yes, he's here in the back. He said, may I speak to him? He said, yes, you may. 
He went in the back and he said to uh, uh, Dwight, he recognized him, of course, and Dwight recognized him. He said, Dwight, you came to my Sunday school class the other day, the other Sunday, and said, I, I haven't been able to get you off my mind, young man. I want to talk to you about Jesus. And Dwight said, I'd love, love for you too, yes, sir. And he sat down and told him how Jesus died for him and how he's buried and rose again and uh, uh, what the, the price he paid. And he said to Dwight, he said, young man, wouldn't you like to get saved? He said, I sure would, Mr. Kimball. I really would. He said, I didn't realize all that. I didn't realize that Jesus died for me like that. I sure would like to get saved. And he led that boy, he's about 16 years old, led him to God. And Dwight L. Moody said when he left that shoe shop that day, it seemed like all the birds in the trees were singing just for him. So it seemed like the sun was shining just a little brighter just for him. He went home with alacrity. He went home with a praise in God that God had saved him. That young 16-year-old boy robbed hell of over a million souls, never finished grade 5 in grammar school, was never an ordained preacher, only a layman, and God used him. And when Dwight L. Moody came to die, Dwight L. said before he died, he said, God is still looking for a man that he can use to win souls and get the job done. And so God can use anyone. Now this man was sent for, but I want you to notice what Jestar did. He covenanted with the Lord. And Judges chapter 11 and verse 11, and Jestar uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now notice that. When this illegitimate young man consented to go back to Gilead and help fight the Ammonites, there he wanted to go before God and have a little talk with the Lord about that. And he went before God. Regardless of our talents and ability, we must be reconciled to God to be used of Him. He was a natural born leader. He needed God. He needed the Spirit of God. And the Bible said he went before the Lord and talked with God about it and God put His Spirit upon him. It's not the strong heart, but the broken heart that God will not despise, saith the Bible. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 17, A broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. God's looking for a broken and contrite heart. And so this man, this leader, this outcast, this illegitimate man, got down before God and said, God, I have a job to do and I want you to help me. And God put his spirit upon him. He is endured with power in verse 29. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jesthar. Now the Spirit of the Lord did not come upon him before he uttered all to the Lord. Verse 11. The Bible said he uttered all to the Lord. He got out on his knees. He said, God, I'm not worthy. He poured out his heart to God. God, I've been an outcast. I'm an illegitimate man. And I've been uh, disowned by the people in my father's family. And, and Lord, I've, I've had these vain men to line up with me and we've been doing evil. He just uttered everything to God. Now you've got to do that if you expect God to be with you. And when he uttered all to God, he confessed to God. And the Bible said, God put his spirit upon him. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witness unto me, saith the Lord. In Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's through the spirit of God. It's not your education. It's not necessarily your talent or your ability. It's the spirit of God that gives you power to witness and use you, and he'll do that. I don't care who you are. The Spirit of God can use you. God's no respect to a person. You don't have to be a, a college graduate or a high school graduate. You might not can read your name in box call letters and still lay hold on God. God wants you. If he can get you, he'll take care of the rest of it. Finally, he gained the victory. In Judges chapter 11 and verse 32, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. Now this man, Jethro, went back to the people that cast him out. He went back with God upon him. The Spirit of God with him. And he went back and led them into battle. And they made him the captain of the group. And had God's hand upon him. He had to put God first in his life. He uttered everything before God before he went back. And when he confessed and uttered everything before God and held nothing back, then God put his Spirit upon him. And he went into battle for God and won the battle. This shows what the marvelous grace of God can do for anyone. I don't care who it is. Layman, lady, girl, boy. I don't care how old or how young. God's no respect to a person. And God can use you just like you are if you're willing to be used. You've got to be like Jethro. You've got to be willing to be used of God. 
and tell the Lord everything to him. Talk to God about your life. Confess your sins before God. Get right with God. Say, Lord, here I am. Take me and use me. And when you do that, you're a candidate for the fullness of God's spirit and a sword in the hand of God to be used for the Lord. Many years ago during the Korean War, when the communists came into South Korea, there they're very brutal and cruel toward the South Korean soldiers. There's a young South Korean soldier out of a Christian family, the only son of a man and woman who loved God. One of these here high-tempered, wicked, young North Koreans got a hold of that boy and after they captured him and began to beat him up and, and uh, torment him and torture him and very cruel to him. And he was a wicked, mean, young North Korean communist. That boy's mother and dad stood there weeping and saw their son, who was a soldier in the South Korean army, being abused and mistreated and tormented and even put to death by these North Korean communists. And this young man taking the lead and had no mercy on their son. And they killed him. But you know the story after the South Koreans regained uh, the territory. They captured this man, this cruel communist who was so mean and brutal. And some of these soldiers recognized him again to beat on him. And this man and woman whose son that they had seen killed by him saw this boy and recognized that face. They'd never forget the face of that cruel communist that killed their boy. And they saw the soldiers beat them and going to put him to death. They ran over and said, listen, please, listen, listen to me. Said, would you let us have this boy? Said, we want this boy. We have a special reason for wanting this boy. And they consented to let this man and woman have this cruel communist North Korean soldier. And they took him bloody and beaten and carried him into their home. There they bathed him and, uh, and doctored his wounds and sat down and talked with him and warned him to Jesus. They said, we saw you when you killed our son. We saw you that you had no mercy on our son. We saw what our son suffered at your hands. And we saw you about to suffer the same thing, but we didn't want you to do it. We want you to know the love of God and we want to tell you about Jesus. And we want to love you and help you to God. We want you saved. That cruel, mean North Korean communist began to weep and got on his knees and begged forgiveness and asked God to save him and asked God to deliver him from his sins. And that Christian woman and Christian man educated him into the things of God. And you know what? God called him to preach. And for years, that boy preached a pastor over in South Korea. And as far as I know, he may still be pastor of the church over there today. All because of this man and woman that saw their son killed by his hands, willing to extend mercy and have compassion on him and forgive him and bring him into their home, take care of him and win him to God, he became a great pastor. That took the grace of God, didn't it? If that had been me or you, we just probably said, all right, let me have a hold of Let me take care of him. I want to kill him. But not this man and woman. They had the love of God and grace of God in their hearts. And if we don't have forgiveness in our hearts, and the grace of God in our hearts, then we're a long way from God. Christianity is based on love and forgiveness and grace. And you better believe that. And if we are not willing to forgive our brothers and sisters or anybody on the outside that's mistreated us and willing to win them to God, then we're a long way from God. We should carry a good knapsack of forgiveness with us everywhere we go in case somebody need to be forgiven about something that done mistreated you or something. Or uh, we may run into somebody that we need to ask forgiveness ourselves. And it takes the grace of God to do it. But God blesses that kind of person. And God uses that kind of person. And a person that's not willing to do that is not going to be used of God. Jethar, come back home, son. You've been kicked out because you're illegitimate. You didn't fit into the family. But come on back. We need you now. We'll forgive you. Jethar, will you lead us in the battle? Jethar said, let me talk to God about this. Yes, I'll lead you. And he led them into battle and won the battle and defeated the Amorites because he was a mighty, mighty leader under the power of Almighty God. Let's stand our feet. You've listened well. Father, I pray today you'll take the message and use it. God, we thank you for the grace extended toward Jethar. And we know that your grace can be extended toward us as well. And we pray you'll help us. God, no doubt there's somebody here this morning needs to be saved. There's people here maybe need to come back to God. There's people here need a church home and maybe uh, you'd want them to be part of us here. 
God, it may be somebody here, something we don't even know about, need to come forward. I pray you'll have your way in this invitation. In Christ's name, amen. Now, as Joan plays for us, if God is speaking to you, come on down here and let's help you. We want to help you. Would you come? Would you come if God is speaking to you today? Would you like to get saved? Come back to God or join the church while we wait. Come on right now. Spirit of God speaking to you. You and you alone know whether or not God is speaking to you. Give me ample time. Would you come? I, I've done what God wanted me to do this morning. Are you doing what God wants you to do? Come on now, will you? dedicate her little daughter, precious little doll, God's placed in her arms to the Lord. I'm going to ask the grandmother to come. Come on down here, Nancy. You can stand there. We'll put somebody hold you up. Come on. Where's, where's Dave? Is he back there? Come on, Dave. Uncle Dave. Come on down here. Amen. I want to dedicate this little one to God. I think it's very wise to do it. We dedicated uh, uh, the Maybe a little black, maybe back in, in, in the best of you after the first Sunday was here. Let me give you this verse of scripture and then we're going to have prayer and dedicate a little uh, uh, Casey Allen to the Lord. I think it's why. In Psalm 127, verse 3, listen. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. You get that? Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his Reward. This is God's reward. It's of the Lord. And we're going to dedicate little cases to God, and shall we do so? Dear Heavenly Father, as we come, <coughs> lay our hands up on this precious little one, the start of your word. God, we dedicate little cases to thee. God, when she gets the age of cabinet to save her precious soul and use it to your glory, she's yours, Father, placed in your hands by her mother. And we pray you watch over. May she be a real blessing. Bless her, dear mothers. Bless her grandmother here. And bless her uncle here. And we pray for all.